Hey guys, what's up? Hey, G4T, Southern California, hooking up with my bros. Got BF on the side, and we got um, One Man Army on the other side, which he doesn't want to be on camera. I mean, just to prove that he's there. There's his shoes. I'm sure that won't give you away. <laughs> but anyways, um, we're actually talking, Big Badfinger and I, we're into bug out scenarios. You know, with what's happening with gold, silver, and the economic situation, what's happening with the Boston Marathon, um... Could this be a pretext to martial law and crap it's a fan? You never know, you never quite know. I don't think so, but it's always good to be prepared. Badfinger and I were at a moment's notice. We were doing bug out drills where we'd leave for a day, two days, three days, and just have like a couple hours to prepare, and we got pretty good at it. I would say you and I could probably bug out of Southern California within a couple hours very, very easily with our food, supplies, and everything we can to be comfortable in a camping situation. Um, but you're talking about actually coordinating with people outside of LA. Could you just comment with what you can? What do you think is important with uh, preparing for a bug out scenario? Uh, well, basically what people should concentrate on is it primarily affects people that are in densely populated areas. So like any cities are usually bad. Los Angeles is bad. Um, Riverside, not so much. The city of San Bernardino is pretty bad, especially with the budgetary issues and them filing for bankruptcy. Uh, city of San Diego would probably be a bad one. They border with Mexico, and they've already got their own issues with that. You know, any densely populated area, I think it's a good idea for anyone to have a plan of action, not to stay in one place at, for a long period of time. If something comes their way, they should have, you know, multiple escape routes. You know, you look at how the military does things. They never do things one way. You know, they always have multiple ways. They plan A, B, C, or D because nothing ever goes as planned as usual. So you say, okay, if a plan A doesn't work, then what are you going to do? Well, plan B doesn't work, then what are you going to do? So you want to be able to have a provision to get yourself, your family, and your friends to get out. You know, some people plan, oh, I'm going to stay in my neighborhood. or That's what you usually see on YouTube. I'm going to stay in my block. And, you know, the problem with that is they fly a drone over your house, and you're armed, and they know you're armed because they have that technology. You just heard about it on the news. They just drop a missile on your house, and you're done. You know, people don't comprehend that, you know, sometimes staying around is not in your best interest. If you're trying to truly avoid a situation, it's better to be somewhere where there's and it's you, just you. And you, like me and BF here, we don't necessarily want to be in California, but we have entangling alliances. You, you know, in your case, you have housing here. I have a house that's paid off. You know, and um, he, BF, bad, bad finger has family. You can't just up and leave it because you've told me you've been to Arizona and stuff, and it's like. Even though you are in a metropolitan area, you need to have plans to survive. What's on? What's the big thing on your mind as a survivalist with everything that's going on? What are you worried about most, or what are you planning for? What contingencies right now are you really planning for? Well, I would definitely say as a concern, uh, you know, we as brothers in Christ, you know, not everybody's a believer. I understand that. Uh, people that that aren't believer, they, you know, they're not believers. They should definitely examine their life, and and I would definitely encourage them to. Why you know, is that get, so important to you that you're you're in a preparing mode with people that have the same faith as you? Well, I think it's a good idea because the priorities are different. You know, when you're a when you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have an understanding that, you know, this life isn't it. You know, you're not trying to as the non believer would try to milk it for everything they can, you know. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die is the kind of mindset that we see in the world. And you know, they can mock and make fun of us all all you want, but we have a basically have already have an understanding of what's going to happen after life, and they don't. You have an eternal perspective. An eternal perspective, exactly. And you're very careful about the people that you bring in. Exactly. I mean, you guys are heavily prepared. You have everything you need to survive, but you, it's always getting people to dedicate that time. Right. To go through drills. That's the one thing Badfinger and I have been able to do. Right. Is we've been able. I mean, dude, we were out bugging out maybe eight to ten times last year. So at least we put in the effort to go do that and get. Right. One thing I can say is we could easily be comfortable out in the bush, for lack of a better term, for weeks, and be very, very comfortable with that. And I think people discount that. Right. It's not just having all your food, having your tent, having your supplies, having your water sources, all that. You have to be in the environment, comfortable in that environment, and be able to deal with the cold, the heat, right. the, the boredom. It's a lot of it is mental preparation, right? You know, so you obviously reached out to me, and it's wonderful meeting. I love meeting with like-minded individuals. Right. Could you talk about why you reached out to Badfinger and uh, G for T here? Well, you know, I watched uh, previous videos, and I had an understanding that you guys were both believers in Christ, and 
it's really important to have people that are like-minded like that because, you know, as we saw in the Old Testament, when, you know, when Egypt, when the Jews left Egypt, when Moses was leading them out, they weren't all Jews. You know, you had Egyptians, you had other surrounding nations that had been captured, and it created a problem because they created division. You know, the Jews wanted to follow Moses, and then, you know, the non-Jews were saying, well, no, let's not listen to Moses. Why can't we do what we want? And we've seen where that created a problem. So the problem with incorporating non-believers into your whatever your planning is is that they may create not saying that that's always the case but they may create a division where there shouldn't be one you want to have everybody on the same page because a variety of different variables exactly so you want to make sure that the people that you're planning with are on the same page because when you have to stop and plan things out and you have to talk to people and break things down that could be a life or death situation you don't have that opportunity so People need to already be on the same page and say, okay, if this happens, we all know together as a team we're going to do this or we're going to do that. But if you have to stop and explain everything to people, that could get you killed or it could get you captured or whatever this is. Yeah, it's really tough bringing people up to speed if they haven't done the work themselves. Exactly. It really creates a a problem that you you can work through. It's not that you can't. It just – it makes – it's a burden it, on your it's resources. Exactly. It's a on yourself. It's ex- that's exactly right. So oh, sorry, man. Wait. Hey, real quick, I want to get Badfinger's point of view on this. You've been telling me, man, and please, I know you like to joke around. Let's be serious for a second, please. I'm Come sorry. on. On a, on a serious level, bro, you've been feeling the pressure from the local law enforcement with this Boston massacre. You know they're going to be turning up the heat on the well, yeah. Patriots well, truthers. What's your... What's your thoughts? Look, not that I want to. Do you think we're this right. is being overblown by well, Alex Jones? What? No, let me explain something here real quick. Can I talk? I um, I'm not saying I want to see cops dying. Okay, I'm just saying what I'm trying to say. It's kind of odd that every time there's an event like a terrorist uh, terrorist plot or a terrorist foil that was foiled or even a terrorist act, you know, they have these drills, these bomb drills, and then the the civilians are the ones who get killed not the cops i mean it should be a mix i mean i'm not saying there should be any deaths i'm just saying you know if there would be a mix of police officers and civilians in that rubble okay there there should have been because of where the cops were standing when the bombs went off and that indicates i'll go as far as to tell everybody i think this is just my opinion i think they i think the obama administration planted it Okay, so G for T, he, you're not the only one. There's a lot of people thinking this is a false flag event. I think a lot of us are, are operating on assumptions and our own instincts. But when you start learning about the police state and what is being planned, it's like every time one of these events come out, they just seem so damn scripted. And then the mainstream media is playing up the graphic images like you couldn't believe. It's like they want to push the Obama agenda forward, and they're going to do it. And they don't care if they have to eliminate innocent people. Hey, me, I got one thing I have to say. This is this is my message out to uh, the Obama administration plus uh, to TSA. You're not going to touch me. Okay? I won't allow you to touch me because I will go off if you touch me. That's what I said. Okay, so we will all do what we can to uh, take care of our own and take care of ourselves. That's to- totally natural. Uh, any co- last comments from you? Um, the only thing I could tell people is that, you know, they're uh, definitely not a believer now that they should, I would encourage them to really seek after Christ and get their life right because this isn't it, you know, at some point. Are we at a, are we at a inflection point in, in the timeline of history here? Yeah, I really think it is. I mean, now more so the gospel is easy to get a hold to more so than it was in the days of the apostles. I mean, you can get it on television, the news, okay, so or you the think this radio. Is, you're actually looking at this from a biblical perspective. Yeah, people really need to, they really, really need to examine themselves and see if they're in, you know, if they're in the body of believers and if they're not, they need to. Okay. Well, yeah. hey, I appreciate that, man. As a fellow Christian brother, I totally support that. And guys, a lot of crazy things are happening, but I think your faith and your belief in God and reaching out to like-minded individuals is what's going to get us through this. God bless. Peace yeah, out. Take care.